All right, we're talking about heat and how heat affects cancer. Let's get into it. All right, first thing I wanna say is that I am not a doctor. Uh, nothing that is said here should be taken as medical advice under any circumstances. Uh, really just wanting to share from our heart and from what we've learned through a fairly painful process of research, uh, building a team of doctors around us for Rachel's treatment, uh, and wanting to kind of package that up for you. If you have any questions, totally recommend you talk with your doctors about uh, anything that we talk about here. So with that in mind, let's get into heat and how heat affects cancer. This is the first video of a three video series. We may tack on a fourth bonus video, but we're still working on that. Um, so this video, we're gonna talk about the science of how heat affects cancer cells so that then we can apply that science in, the, in two specific areas of treatment that you'll probably hear about if you're in the cancer world for very long. So the first being saunas, kind of whole body heat, uh, and then hyperthermia. And so we'll, we'll talk about those in future videos. So before diving into anything specific to this topic, um, I really wanna separate, always wanna separate fact from fiction, from um, fake news, you know, on the internet, from the, the things, the, the anecdotes, the blog posts, the, there's just so much on the internet that it's difficult to boil that down um, to understand what we can rely upon, what we can trust. And so that's a, that's a really difficult process. And so we uh, had, had to go through that process time and time again with Rachel's treatment as we look at new options and try to understand what they do and what they don't do. And so um, that's the goal for this conversation is to help separate those things and really present what um, is at least widely accepted as, as fact. So let's dive in. How heat kills cancer cells. So there are three types of cell death that we're gonna talk about here. The first two, so apoptosis and necroptosis, are where the cancer cell is essentially reprogrammed to self-destruct. So you can think of this like pressing the power button on your computer. That's initiating a process to where your computer shuts down. And so in this context, still super helpful. It's what we're going for in, in affecting cancer. But it is a contrast from the third one, which is necrosis, which is more like the death by natural causes, the catastrophic death. Um, this is like throwing your computer out the window. You know, not that it's an effective way of shutting it down, but much more catastrophic and instant. So uh, here's what happens when we apply heat to cancer cells. This is a, a chart from a study that, that was applying heat to specific areas that had specific tumors. And so in the chart, we see at the lowest temperature, so 43 degrees Celsius is about 109.4 degrees Fahrenheit. We see the four, I'll just orient this here. So the four bar charts, the first bar is live cancer cells, so unaffected cancer cells. Then we have apoptosis and necroptosis. Those are those two programmed cell death cycles. And then the catastrophic death and the necrosis here. So what this means is that at that lowest temperature that was measured, 109.4, um, you have a little over 50% of cancer cells unaffected, but that still means that about, what is that, 46% uh, in total are entering some form of death cycle. So that's still really significant. Um, as you go up in temperature, so this is the 114 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, you see a pretty dramatic shift where it's only less than 20% of live cells uh, left unaffected cancer cells. And you see this uptake in the apoptosis and necroptosis cycle, uh, and then jump that to the highest temperature that was measured 120 degrees. And you see this major jump in the necrosis cycle. So this is the, 
you're burning the cancer cells from the inside out, essentially, and they are um, they're dying significantly. So this is really encouraging. Um, the, the studies that have been done that have shown the specific effect that heat and really heat alone has on cancer cells. Um, cancer cells are really unstable. They're really unhealthy in, in, in large part. And so uh, what's cool about heat is that our natural cells are better equipped to regulate temperature than cancer cells. So you can heat an area, and you don't have to worry about heating just specifically the cancer cells because heating the area, your normal cells at temperatures like this um, are fine. They, they, can, they can regulate, they're okay, and the cancer cells can't handle it. And that's what we see here um, in, in this chart. So this is what we're going for when we're talking about heat and cancer. All right, so the, the other thing that happens when you heat your cells, whether whether cancer cells or, or healthy cells, um, this, it produces something called heat shock proteins. And there are a number, it, it's a category of types of compounds, um, but heat shock proteins, they're produced under stress, specifically heat stress. And what's cool about them is they're a mediator for apoptosis in particular. So remember one of those programmed cell deaths? HSPs really help grease the wheels for, for that process and can help transition cells um, and communicate to them, hey, jump into apoptosis, which is what we're going for. Also, this is really cool. HSPs have been shown to reduce resistance to things like chemo and radiation. So if, if um, a tumor uh, has not responded to chemotherapy in the way that uh, maybe doctors expected or you, you expected or hoped, seems to have a resistance that's been built, heat and the production specifically of heat shock proteins can help break down those resistances, break down those walls and make the cancer cells susceptible to that treatment where they weren't as susceptible before. So that's super cool and encouraging um, when looking at options in our toolbox. Another aspect to consider is that uh, it, that kind of fights against what we're talking about is that our bodies are really good at regulating temperature. It's really hard to bring your core temperature off the line in either direction. And so that works against a lot of what we're talking about. Imagine that you're you're standing out in the, I grew up in Vegas, in the Vegas sun, summer, you know, middle of summer, 120 degrees, you feel hot. You're sweating almost immediately. You maybe start breathing more quickly. These are all coping mechanisms for that heat and your core temperature has not actually been affected in any significant way at that point. Now, when you move into things that, you know, you may hear about around like heat stroke, um, or heat exhaustion. That's actually the process of your body no longer being able to regulate its core temperature. And so you go through this kind of painful, difficult reboot, dangerous reboot cycle to, to bring your core temperature back into a regulated state. So when we're talking about heat treatment options, this process of self-regulation makes it more difficult to, to effectively treat cancer with heat and so what you'll see, and, and when we talk about actual treatment options, you'll see how those treatment options try to work around or, or subvert that self-regulation process to reduce the stress on the overall body. So just something to keep in mind that it's harder than you'd think to introduce significant heat changes to a part of your body. Okay, so just summarizing really quick, the goal of any heat therapy is gonna to be to cause the death of cancer cells while preserving healthy cells. It's gonna to be to trick your body into allowing this overheating to occur without significant self-regulation. Um, so you'll see that as we, as we look at those options. Um, and ultimately we wanna produce these heat shock proteins because um, they have a, a ton of benefit across many realms. One thing we didn't talk about, they increase your immune response, they lower inflammation, um, all, all things that are good markers to health and uh, your immune response, particularly in a, in a cancer state, is typically lower 
because the cancer was able to develop, your immune system is, is compromised likely in some way. And so increasing that uh, is only going to be helpful. Uh, so that's what we're talking about. That's the science as we understand it around heat therapy options. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, if you could give us a like and a subscribe down below. Otherwise, be blessed. Take care of yourselves. Let us know if you have other topics that you'd like us to cover.